the health insurance marketplace, uh, Get Covered Illinois. Get Covered Illinois isn't just what we do. It's very purposeful. It is a call to action. I made a call of action to each of you to tweet, to share this information among your networks, uh, both in cyberspace, but your, your real face-to-face -face corporeal networks. Uh, please share it. It's a call to action. We want to develop a culture of coverage. You've heard about penalties associated with not having coverage for individuals. And those penalties are real. But that is not the reason primarily that we want you to be covered. We want you to be covered because it protects your health, your, your loved one's health, and it protects your finances. Most bankruptcies in the United States, I think upwards of 80% are caused because of medical cost. That will be reduced because of the Affordable Care Act. Um, I don't have to talk to you about what a portal is. Um, I don't think I have to talk to you, look around the rooms. I, I think we've got that pretty well covered. Um, in Illinois, which is a partnership state, it is not a state-run exchange, or we call it a marketplace. We work in partnership with the federal government. The federal government has responsibilities, which is setting up the actual marketplace for the private insurance. It is called healthcare.gov. You may have, I heard of some snickers, you may have heard um, a thing or two about healthcare.gov, and there were some significant challenges as it rolled out on October 1st uh, through uh, November 30th. Uh, but I can tell you that because I do this work and I work with consumers and I work with uh, others that, that need to use those systems, the consumer experience and the functionality is much, much, much greatly improved and it is improving day by day. So most consumers, just as it is touted now, most consumers will have a positive functional experience. And those uh, situations that present themselves, we develop workarounds. Uh, again, I work for the state of Illinois, <clears throat> and we're very proud of the technology that we have created that facilitates access into healthcare.gov. There are really, in Illinois, there are three websites, three portals that are significant. One, and we ask, that is not it. One, we ask all consumers to be in Illinois to start with getcoveredillinois.gov. There's a plethora of great information about the Affordable Care Act, and I know you like that word, plethora, but there is indeed a plethora of great information and it also is the opportunity to literally get started. Let's see here. And I. Dun, dun, dun. Musical interlude. There we go. So you start here, and we have. There we go we have what we call a screening tool that's here. And it really smooths things out with the interactions with, get, with um, healthcare.gov. Because what we do in the screening tool is we ask some assessment questions, screening questions, to determine whether a person appears to be likely qualified and routed to the private insurance marketplace in which case they will be routed to healthcare.gov, or whether they will likely, based on income and household size, be routed to Illinois Medicaid. And that is a brand new portal as well. Uh, it is AID, the Application for Benefits Eligibility. And I, I do this, this is my work. And it probably took me about two weeks before I was able to figure out that the uh, acronym AID is a nod to our 16th president. <laughs> right. So I didn't see the profile in the first couple of weeks we talked about Abe, but I get it now. Um, <laughs> Abe is the portal, the application for benefits eligibility, not only to apply for uh, Medicaid, it is the portal to apply for all of the public benefits that are available in Illinois. So SNAP, 
what formerly were known as food stamps, TANF, the temporary assistance for needy family, <coughs> families, and other things. But for Illinois consumers, we strongly encourage them to begin at getcoveredillinois.gov because that screening tool can help route them and take a lot of the opportunities for things to go awry at uh, healthcare.gov. So those are the three primary technology platforms. And, and again, uh, you have read the coverage and you may have had some of the experience with healthcare.gov. But uh, as I said, the functionality is much, 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 much improved, particularly since December, uh, December 1st. So I will get back to PowerPoint. Moving it around, keeping it going. All right. So some key dates. October 1st was the beginning of open enrollment for individuals. Uh, that date has passed. Open enrollment for individuals closes on March 31st. So we, we want you to get covered today. We want you to enroll literally here. You can't enroll. But we want you to get covered as soon as possible. But you need to be covered by March 31st as an individual. Um, if you enroll by the 15th of a month of the month, you in the private insurance, you will be covered for the first of the following month. If you wait till the 16th, it's going to lag back an additional month. So uh, that would actually be six weeks. Uh, so we want you to, to get in, get enrolled, be protected. Eligibility for financial help. It goes, and I have to look at my crib sheets on some of these figures. Uh, consumers with household incomes between 100 and 400 percent of the federal poverty line. Now, 100 uh, percent of the federal poverty line is about 11,500 for a single individual. For a family of four, it is about 20, 23,000. Uh, so, if you are a single individual, that is the lower tier for financial help for private insurance through the federal government. It goes up to 400% of the federal poverty line. For a single individual, that's about $46,000 a year. And for a family of four, it's about $94,000 a year. That's why I said most Illinois residents that do not go into the expanded Medicaid uh, will get financial assistance to help support them. That's something that we're really trying to lift up. There are opportunities. It's based on income. It's based on household size. But most Illinois residents, that their income is higher than that for Medicaid eligibility, will get one of the two types of federal assistance, federal subsidy that is available. If you are having, uh, if you're receiving Medicare, and I see I'm very confident that there's no one in this room that is on Medicare. Ah, if, you're, if one is on Medicare, there is no action you need to take. Uh, you are covered. You meet the minimum standards for coverage. You are set. If it is employer-based health care, if you get your health, health insurance through your job and it is affordable to you and it meets the minimum standards, you are covered. You are set. And by affordability for the Affordable Care Act means that it is less than 9.5% of your household income. If it's less than 9.5% of your household income, you are set. It is, it is affordable to you by our standards. If it's more than 9.5%, you have the opportunity <clears throat> to opt out of that coverage and go into the marketplace and you'll be considered for the subsidies that are available and you can pick a plan. Uh, if you're on TRICARE, if you're an active, active duty service person, uh, if you're getting VA benefits, you are all set. If you're currently on Medicaid and in Cook County uh, County Care, you're set. You don't have to take any action except do tweeting tonight or, <laughs> or and I don't see any fingers on the keyboard, uh, but I, I, perhaps I've said too much. <laughs> so there are two types of subsidies that are available through the federal government. The first is if you're between 100 and 400 percent of the federal poverty line, then you are eligible for consideration for what we call advanced premium tax credits. 
tax credits. If um, those tax credits are calculated as soon as you get into uh, into healthcare.gov, is one of the first things that happen after you get all your <coughs> demographic information in, your income, sources of income, etc. It calculates the uh, tax credit and asks you how you want to apply it. You can apply it, get all of it, uh, apply all of it at the end of the tax filing year when you file your taxes, or you can get it all up front and break it up in 12-month increments, and the federal government will send a payment on your behalf directly to the health insurance companies each month. Uh, that's what we are finding most consumers are doing. Is they want to get that payment directly to the health insurance company. The uh, tax credit is calculated, and then you can go shopping based on that tax credit. It helps defray the cost of your monthly premium. That's an important concept to, to really have nailed down. The tax credit defrays the cost of the monthly premium that you pay for your private insurance health. There's no monthly premium for the expanded Medicaid or for Medicaid at all, uh, certainly for adults. Uh, the second way that one can get a tax, a federal, uh, a federal subsidy is called cost sharing. Cost sharing. And the band for that is a little narrower. It's between 100 and 250 percent of the federal poverty line. What does that mean? Again, for single individuals, 11,500 is 100 percent. For uh, the 100 uh, percent for a family of four, it's about 23,500. For uh, 200 percent, excuse me, 250 uh, percent, a single person is 28,000, almost 29,000, 287. For a family of four, it's 55,800, almost 59. So again, even with the cost sharing, there is a, a fairly generous band of assistance that is available. The cost sharing, and this is important to understand, the cost sharing helps defray the cost of out-of-pocket expenses. Those would be deductibles. You're hearing a lot about deductibles with the private insurance health plan. Deductibles. Uh, co-pays for doctor visits, for hospitalization, for uh, prescription benefits or prescriptions. That helps defray the cost of your out-of-pocket expenses. So a person who is between uh, 133 percent and 400 percent and 250 percent of the federal poverty line is in pretty good shape in terms of subsidy. They will get both kinds. Now, I've talked, I just mentioned a new figure, 133%. There's a reason why I mentioned that. Below 133% of the federal poverty line, which is, a, which is about 15, between 15 and $16,000 for a single individual and 33,000 for a family of four, if you're both 133% of the federal poverty line or less, you will generally go into Illinois Medicaid, generally. Generally, that's why the range for subsidy consideration is between 100 and 400 percent of the federal poverty line. There are categories of individuals that cannot go into uh, Illinois Medicaid despite being relatively low income, and that is, that among them are lawfully present immigrants that are not U.S. citizens but they have lawful status. If they've been in the U.S. for less than five years, the law says they cannot go into Medicaid, irrespective of their income level. So the law, in its wisdom, has made allowances for that. It allows, if they're between 100 and 400 percent, and they can't go into Medicaid, they can still go into the expanded medic, or excuse me, the private insurance marketplace and be considered for the subsidies. So that's a great benefit for them. Uh, I am going to just go through the essential plan benefits for the private insurance. And you should know that in the Medicaid, it parallels this, uh, I think, almost without exception. So take a look at those. For those of us that have had health insurance through our jobs or otherwise, Many of these things will seem very familiar to you, but I challenge you to rack your brains. In general, you probably have not had a health insurance plan that has had all 10 of these benefits. 
without paying for an extra rider that covers this or covers that. So I'll let you take a look at that, and I'm, I'll provide the uh, this PowerPoint deck to uh, OpenGov so that they can make it available to to those. Uh, the the ones that I want to really really highlight here are number five. Mental health and substance use disorders. Most typical health plans, employer-based or otherwise, uh, would not necessarily cover this, and it would not cover it in terms of what are called parity rules, and that is absolutely huge. Uh, parity says that the coverage that is provided for physical health issues the hospitalization rules for if you break your leg or if you're hit by a car or if you have a, a tremendously bad physical ailment, they need to be reflected on the mental health and substance use disorder side. That there has to be some balance there. There has to be parity. That is absolutely huge. Many of our communities all over Illinois, all over the U.S. are ravaged by mental health and substance use disorder services uh, problems. And this is a great part is going to help address that. The people that need help, that want to get help, and just simply haven't had the help. The Affordable Care Act is providing some access to that. Uh, the other thing that I want to really highlight is preventive and wellness services. The idea of preventive, we all know what preventive means, but for the Affordable Care Act, this is absolutely huge. So there are a category of services that are considered to be preventive. And if they are preventive, by definition of the Affordable Care Act, they're at no additional cost. They're no out-of-pocket cost. They come with a basic health plan. Among them are things like um, mammography. In mammography, mammograms aren't just for women. Men uh, have a need for them as well, but m mammography. Uh, PAP exams, um, the colonoscopies, many of these kinds of services that formerly would they would be you'd be charged for the cost of the exam, you'd be charged for a doctor's visit. These are being provided at no out-of-pocket cost, no additional cost. Uh, <coughs> immunizations, uh, flu shots, etc., um, HPV uh, uh, injections. Those things are preventive and no additional cost. And significantly for women, for women that for family planning, uh, birth control, um, FDA approved birth control is at no out of pocket cost. And that is huge as well. Now there is uh, litigation going on at the federal level on the subject of faith based organizations and the uh, and the birth control issues uh, that were litigated in court, and the, uh, in court, but for the vast, vast majority of people in America, those preventive services and, and those family planning things are in place and will continue to be in place. Um, consumer assistance, uh, educating consumer staff such as myself, we, we come out, we make presentations, we engage with consumers. But very significantly, we have a paid and earned media campaign. Uh, paid, of course, are, are ads, commercials, digital, television, radio, bus ads. Earned media is the coverage that we receive from the media that we do not pay for because it's newsworthy and we are also oh newsworthy. Um, there have been thousands of stories, most of which have been, uh, from our standpoint, very, very positive about our efforts here in Illinois. Uh, and we'll, they'll continue. And then we have what is called our Illinois Navigator Program. We're very, very proud of this. Navigators <clears throat> are employees of community-based organizations that are all over the state, serving communities all over the state, trusted community-based organizations that have received either grant funding from the state or grant funding from the federal government to hire these uh, staff they are specially trained by the state and the federal government. They're certified by the federal government and the state. And all they do, all they do is come out, engage with consumers, do outreach, they educate, and they enroll. 
And that's where the payoff is for us, particularly moving forward towards the March 31st end of open enrollment is enrollment. We want people to be protected. Talked about this, uh, and I think I just want to reiterate the March 31st date is the end of open enrollment. This is uh, on these uh, flyers that you have. There is information about the toll-free number that you can always get help. You can also locate a navigator uh, through this toll-free helpline that state. Uh, you can also go to Get Covered Illinois and get lots and lots of information, including the location of the navigator and enrollment events that may be in your community. So at this point, again, I give you the 50 cent version of this. I would like to open this up, and if there are questions, I know there's a full agenda today, but I, but I, I find that the payoff is in great part uh, the tweets, 